Hey there, Photo Universe. Okay, so I um, got a couple of things on my mind. This is another vlog. Uh, some interesting things. There's some thoughts I've really been having. So, um, okay, so uh, I haven't always been a photographer. I've done some other stuff. Um, uh, after 9-11 here in the United States, I kind of, uh, my career path kind of got a little wonky. Um, you may have caught some of this in some of my other videos. But um, I am actually a certified flight instructor, and um, I was an airline pilot back about 10 years ago, you know, right before 9-11. <laughs> Good timing on that. Um, I was flying for Continental Airlines and um, got furloughed for five years and figured, you know, I'm too old for this. So, um, But been there, done that. It was a lot of fun. So, But the reason I bring that up is because I'm still a certified flight instructor right now, and I teach people, students, how to fly private pilot, commercial pilot. Um, uh, my ratings are commercial pilot, multi-engine, single engine, instrument. Okay. So I'm catching, now how does this relate to photography? I'm catching a lot of forum chatter. And there's a lot of it in these days. And it's really interesting. Um, and to, I, I came up with this analogy and I wanted to share it. So there's, stu there's two student pilots and they're arguing about which has the better landing gear, an Airbus A320 or a 737. And these are student pilots in Cessna 172s and Cessna 150s. Anybody see the flaw in that? I mean, if you're a pilot, you, you know, you'll know what I'm talking about. And the one student's arguing, well, the 737, you know, is stiff-legged landing gear. It doesn't caster. And, and the Airbus A320, you know, when you land, it casters. And it's so much easier to land. And the other student's saying, yeah, but, you know, the 737's a Boeing. And, and, you know, if you know what you're doing, you don't need the caster, castering landing gear. And, and these guys, you know, aren't even rated or qualified yet to fly a little single-engine Cessna. So let's say they, they are qualified to slot fly and let's say they're private pilots. You know, let's if they were airline pilots in, in the lounge, waiting that you know, one flew for uh, somebody who has A320s, the other one flew for somebody who had 737s, and they were arguing, well, at least they know what they're arguing about, and they know the scope of what they're arguing about, and they know that neither airplane sucks, right? I mean, an A320 is great and a 737 is great. And there's many people flying every day in 737s getting to where they need to be. And there's many people flying an A320. I mean, you know, so if you have a Canon 5D Mark III or you have a Nikon D800, what's there to argue about? If you can't get a decent picture with either one of those cameras, it ain't the camera. Okay, so, you know, if you get that analogy, I just want to show, I mean, there's some really weird stuff going on out there these days. These cameras are so good these days. It's kind of ridiculous. So that's number one. Um, number two, um, so there was a comment in one of my videos the other day where somebody said something about the K52S. Like, oh, the moir is just such a problem. Nobody in their right mind, well, I, I'm paraphrasing here, obviously, you know. Nobody, nobody should buy that camera. You, you, I'll tell you right now where it sits with me, okay? Here's the bottom line on the K52S so far. I mean, I've shot it enough now to know where we're at with this, okay? Number one, if I already had a K5, there's no reason to upgrade. <laughs> I'll say it again. If you don't need another camera and you don't need a backup body and you don't have the money and you don't want to spend the money and you have a K5, don't buy a K5 II or 2S. It's not enough of an upgrade. If your K5 just got run over by a truck, 
go buy a K52S. I'll get into that in a minute. Um, if you have a K5, there's no reason you, you, don't, you don't need to upgrade to anything. If there's not enough of a change. Wait for the next generation. Okay. If you're going to buy a K52 or a K52S, don't buy the K52. Get the S. Okay? You may see the Moir or false color in a half a percent, a tenth of a percent of the photographs you take. As you will see sharper pictures in every photograph you take with the K52S. Unless you specifically shoot textiles for a commercial house, or you specifically know that you shoot stuff that more can be a problem, don't even worry about it. I'm telling you right now, even if you're a wedding photographer or a commercial photographer who does product photography, I'd still get the, you probably have two cameras anyway, right? You have more than one. So, but I'd get the K52S. If I was a wedding photographer, I could go shoot weddings all day long, and I am a wedding photographer, I do them every once in a while. But if I was doing it full time, full bore, all the time right now, I'd have two K52Ss and be done with it. I wouldn't need anything else. And I would not get the two, the non-S version. Because the Moir is not a problem. You'll never see it. It'll never, unless, unless you're looking for it and going out of your way and then you'll have a hard time finding it. Or I have a far hard time recreating it. Seriously, okay. That's where we're at with that. <clears throat> um, the K52S is turning out to be the sharpest APS-C camera that I've shot. Okay, the K52S is not up to the full frame. It's it, that's just the way it is, and it has to do with the advantage of having the bigger image. When it's just like medium format film, you know, even though the um, the full frame cameras have the filters, like the five the D D800E without the AA filter. Yeah, whatever. Um, however, you get to a point where sharp is sharp enough, right? 22 megapixels sharp enough for me, for what I'm doing. You get to a point where it's overkill, and that's what I'm saying. I, I am perfectly happy and thrilled. Now, I'm a person, I've said this before. D200 came along, I was shooting it, reached the limitations in about six months. My 16 by 20s weren't very sharp. Waited for the next camera, D300, great. D700, yeah, marginally improvement. Um, when I hit the 20 to 21 megapixels of the 5D Mark II, I looked at my 16 by 24s and went, yep, I'm there, 20 by 30s, yep, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. All the size prints that I make, I'm good. That may not be you, but I'm telling you, I mean, I, I'm not going to hit any limitations with the 5D Mark III to 5D Mark II. I mean, I'm, I just, I'm, it's producing the goods for me. I don't need another camera. Um, on that note, the 5D Mark III is here. And you know, I thought this camera was overpriced when it first came out. And now that I have it, it's not. It's worth the 3,500 bucks. Um, I didn't pay that. I paid under three. But uh, yeah, this, this is what the 5D Mark II and the 5D should have been all along. I mean, this autofocus and everything. This is, this is, a, this is a 1D light. And that's awesome. Instead of being like a, D60 with a full frame sensor, which is what the 60 is going to be. And people are like, should I get a 5D Mark III or a 6D? If you have to ask the question, get the 6D because you don't know the difference. Okay? <laughs> if you're asking that question, get the 6D because it doesn't make it. The 5D Mark III will be wasted on you. Okay? Because if, if you know you need the 5D Mark III, then you know you need it. All right? And I'm not being smug about that. I'm just saying. If, if you're thinking about, should I buy a 5D Mark III or 6D? Get the 6D. 5D Mark III is a professional machine, finally. I wouldn't say that about the 5D Mark II. It was a professional sensor in an amateur body. Amateur, yeah, professional, yeah, you know. I mean, the autofocus wasn't up to it. You know, I didn't say it was bad, it's usable, but it's not this, okay? The auto, this is, this, we're there. Okay, 5D Mark II wasn't there. 7D is there, okay? K52, K52S, K5, we're not there yet. 
I mean, great camera. There's things about it I absolutely love more than any other camera that there is. I didn't say that they're awful. I said they're not there. Okay. When the K3 comes out, whatever, the next level of Pentax, we might be there. 7D is the end of the road. I don't care if they come out with 7D Mark II, Mark III, Mark IV, Mark VIII. I, it doesn't matter. The 7D, we're done. That camera's perfect. Okay? Finally. 5D Mark III, we're there. We're done. For me, in my opinion, I could shoot this camera the next 20 years. I have no reason to upgrade. I got the autofocus I want. I got the handling I want. I got the features I want. It's lacking nothing for me. Okay? 7D, 5D Mark III, these are, these are evolved products, right? So that's what I'm saying. All right, so that's where we're at. Don't get me wrong, still love the K5, okay? Don't, don't read into that that, you know, oh, you said the K5 was great, now you hate it. I didn't say that. Okay, you're, you're saying I said that, I didn't say that. It's still here, right? Okay, so that's Ed with Photo Universe, and that's a couple of things on my mind that might help somebody. Some thoughts, some photographic thoughts, and I uh, appreciate it. Have a good one. All right.